at the end of my Mimic Board video I magicked a signal box out of thin air but it was sadly lacking in any interior detail so I thought I better get on and 3D print an interior and show you the stages I went through to make it. The signal box was based on this picture of Lloyd's Sidings signal box but the interior is based on Crew North Junction. It's an electromechanical signal box, not got the full levers. So I'll show you how I drew up the lever frames and the ancillary components for the signal box and some old fashioned bell repeaters as well. First stage is to create the basic profile of the lever frames. Put a few chamfers on them, join them together to one and a couple of radiuses. Then turn them into a solid form and make a profile for the lever itself. Extrude those as well and then copy them until you have a full desk of the arch shaped pieces. Then we make one handle and we copy it again multiple times, some forwards, most of them back and that gives you your basic form which you can then step repeat depending on how many desk units you need and then we create a profile for an end stand uh, extrude that up extrude that up and make a top cap and a bottom cap it just repeats of the same shape and on the front we have some door profiles yet again step repeat them put one on the end as well because that's what it shows in their photograph and now we copy the units along and mirror the end one. There's your standard lever frame unit. Now we need a backboard which we're going to put a, a track plan on and stick it at the back. Extrude it out. This of course will be laser cut. And now we go on to making some bell machines. Start off with one with a simple profile, round the corners, offset it, create the next stage up, then make a slightly reduced halfway stage, repeat the bottom big layer, and then a copy of the same profile in the middle at the top with just one radius. Now we're going to push a little indentation in the front to represent the panel and the indicator. Now we make a profile for the turn knob and extrude that out. All right, we just copy the lower section to make a shorter machine and then we use a very similar base just slightly stretched to make the next bell. My, uh, a thin platform on top and then another little deck on top of that onto which we're going to make a profile extrude it along repeat it round and then mitre them together on top of this we're going to do a drum with a dial face on it so extrude out the main portion of the drum first then the external portion radius the edges round and add a couple of wedges to support it underneath. Another machine, this one's going to be a simple bell. Extrude up, steal the profile from the next door drawing, extend it back, make a circular mount, and then produce a bell shape that sits on top of it. And then we need a little knob at the front. Now, to keep us warm, we need a little pot bellied stove, so we do a plinth and then a round circle for the body, extrude that up radius the top edge of it, blend it into the bottom profile and then we need a little half, half part way up and then we need door, same profile, turn up through 90 degrees and then extruded forwards and that's the main part of the pot bellied stove with a few corners rounded off to make it look a bit more blended hole in the top for the chimney pipe to come out and that's done now, so we've got most of the main components now, we've got, the, we've got the lever frame, we've got a desk which is created by part of the lever frame and the two ends, 
a lower bench, which is again parts taken from the others. We've got a coal scuttle, an armchair to sit in on those moments when he gets a chance. Finally, we've got the signalman and two old fashioned GPO phones that hang on the wall. Here you go, here it is, all laid out inside the signal box where it's going to finally be positioned. And we'll just add on the staircase. There's the roof. Everything done, ready to print, and a sign for the front. Next stage is to export my drawings from the CAD package, and we send them as an STL. And here they are, imported into G2Box, which is the slicer program which we use on the resin printer. And then you process it, and it slices it into tiny thin slices, and sends each slice at a time to the printer and they progressively build up from each other in the bath of resin. And once they're done, you see them there hanging upside down still with a bit of drippy wet resin on. They get taken off the base plate and washed in isopropyl alcohol in this special wash tank we have and then exposed to UV light to thoroughly harden them once they're clean. If you don't clean them properly, any bits of leftover resin will just get hardened on the surface as well. There you go. There's the array of components. Here's the bits laid out to laser cut and the planks on the bottom floor. And off we go and cut the bits out. And I've cut a couple of spares just in case. You know. All laid out sprayed on their sticks, stoves black, seats brown, benches a greenish colour, bell machines a wood colour with their dials painted on, ready to be fitted and here's the lever frame with the, its little panels on there and a familiar looking track diagram applied to the back in place in the signal box and a look through the window and off to the layout we go and fix it in place just by the bridge and the junction. And cross deboilered 9F pulls a mixed parcel train up the incline towards the signal box and Oldman beyond. signal box lights come on then a fair burn tank passes with a local stopping passenger service thanks for watching I hope there wasn't too much drawing for everyone's taste but remember to comment like share subscribe and ring the bell for notifications Bye now.